All right, welcome back to the RC Spark Studio, my friends, and you are joining me in the second video of my Lesu wheel loader. This is a hydraulic all metal wheel loader. I was surprised to see how much metal was in this kit. In fact, there are only like four pieces of plastic. Everything else is metal. So it is an insane kit to look at. Everything has been painted and laid out for you to see. Interesting. There are two instruction books for this build, uh, just for two different parts of the build itself. Now, a whole bunch of these pieces came uh, set in styrofoam or like in foam block, and the other pieces uh, came wrapped in bubble wrap uh, in a separate box. So there are individual uh, pieces to assemble, and then they come together. Yes, I know. I said in the last video that I was going to paint it the same color scheme as I saw on the box, but I actually deviated away a little bit. I chose not to go with white, but instead a nice dark gray. Now the axles are already pre-painted black and there is some brass on there. Of course, also the uh, silver uh, bolts that make them very scale. And then here are the uh, brass um, uh, rams. You can see they've already started to tarnish. I actually love this. I don't want to paint these guys. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Some people will say they want to, you know, see it a different color, but that's the beauty of the hobby. When you get your kit, you can do whatever you want to yours. Look at this. Here's the bucket. Coat after coat I did on these things, letting them dry for 24 hours in between coats. Thank you, Spiderweb, for making it look like everything was scratched. <laughs> But I know a few minutes in the dirt, we'll probably see it peeling back off the bucket. But that's, that's pretty standard. Yes, I went a little crazy here. Look at this. The teeth are going to be orange. What are you doing? You've ruined it already! I've read it all over the last 10 years, 12 years, and what I do, like 100 builds? <laughs> Look, at it just turned out so well. I actually ordered all my paints online. Uh, I'll give you a, a website in the video description box down below, because I can't remember the name of the site right now. And uh, it's the, I have paints actually made for me. This is actually the Doosan Orange, if you guys f are familiar with that brand at all. Why did I go Doosan Orange? for a Lee Bear? Well, because it's a hobby and I can do whatever colors I like because I love having a variety of different things. Even these handrails, they were chrome. I decided to go ahead and paint them orange. Some of these pieces, here's a whole line up here. You'll be like, you didn't paint those at all. And that's true. I want to see how they fit. And, and it, like once everything's getting, uh, once everything is assembled or near assembly, then I will paint these pieces to suit it the best the way I think it should look. In the last video, I showed you how heavy these uh, wheels are. Listen, just like, they're almost a pound each. Everything's ready to go. Two instruction books, one to help me assemble one piece, one to help me assemble the other. We're going to start on this piece right here. It's basically the frame or the chassis for uh, the wheel loader, uh, or at least half of it. Let's get going. So page one, step one. So take bracket A2, so that's going to be for the rocker for the wheels, and then the bearings and the pin and an E-clip. So one of those, two of the flange bearings, and then one pin that's 42.5. Well, there's the flange bearings, that's easy. There's a whole bunch of pins in this bag. That's probably, I'll just cut that open. And the E buttons. <laughs> All right, so flange bearing on the inside. And of course, my paint job has done an awesome job of <coughs> changing the tolerances just to kind of level it out and then gently push it into place like that oh it's on the wrong side no I'm just kidding <laughs> oh I can almost get it in there it's just a little bit too tight everyone's like you damaged the paint nope I didn't it's pretty resilient and then we want to drop the rocker down with the pin going through. Oh, come on, rocker, get in there. I know I didn't change any of the tolerance on this at all. There's barely any paint on the rocker. Wow, that is super tight fit in there. 
there we go. So I did not really have to push it too hard with my fingers uh, to get it into the right spot. So, you know, make sure that your, uh, your bearings are actually seated properly. I'm going to try to get this pin all the way through without being able to really line up the holes visually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down here and you can see, is it right on point? Almost. I had to gently persuade it with a rubber mallet, but it is in place. It was a very light tap. What? Now for those sweet E buttons, as the instruction book calls it, or the E clips, or for some people they know them as Jesus clips, because that's what they shout as soon as they fly onto the floor, there is this handy dandy E clip tool. Look at this. I'm going to try to find one on Amazon and link it for you guys in the video description box below, because every single hobbyist should have one of these. Every mechanic should have one of these. This is simple. If you look on the other side, it's like a two-stage clip here, where it kind of breaks. You can see there's there, there's two side, there's two sides to this, where you just find the right size. You stick your E clip in here, just like that, and it holds it. This spreads apart a little bit, but it holds the E clip nice and tight. That way, when you go in, all you have to do is just stick it right down on the outside, push down, and it's on. No more lost E clips! Yay! Remember that bag of pins that I said I was going to cut open? Notice that these say 11.2, these say 11.5, and then these say 11.6. If you are building along with me right now, make sure that you get the next step proper because in the instruction book, it is saying 11.6. You're also going to need the second swing part for the uh, chassis assembly and two of the uh, brass uh, rams for the hydraulics. Also two screws that are the M2-4, so over here, M2-4, they are bolts, so we're just going to need a few of those. There are the hydraulic rams, you can see them, very small. I could polish those up any time. You guys will be like, that doesn't look proper at all. I don't like it. Uh, it's thumbs down right now. But actually, that's a still, it's okay. I want unique RCs. I've always enjoyed unique looking uh uh, construction equipment. I think all the same stuff kind of gets a little bit boring and to each their own, right? Whatever floats your boat. So there we go. We're going to be setting this up. You'll notice each one, it can be set up on each side. So both of them have uh, the hose connectors up top and then one on the left side and then one on the right. See those two holes right in the middle and I'm referring to this one and this one on the top. This is where they're actually going to be sliding in. So it's going to be fed up through the middle and then in like that with a pin that goes through. That pin is going to need a bolt in it. And then what I did to one side, I do to the other. So the second ram is now installed. You can see the two bolts. All right, now the next step, step number three, is actually very complicated. And I learned new curse words that I never even knew existed in my brain until this step. What you're looking at here is the two parts coming together to form the center joint where it articulates in the middle, where the wheel loader articulates. So here, now we're running into the 11.5 uh, um, pin. We're going to have uh, two of these center pins where it's going to be like a kingpin but a swing pin. Uh, two of these screws. There is the gasket. I wanted to put one side by side so you could see. If you are building along, it is in this bag. 7.3 by 4. One asterisk 0.5 gasket and then an e-clip. Now you're actually going to need two e-clips here. They only list one, but you need two. And what do I mean? Well, these two came together. I did this off camera, as you can tell. I was kind of chatting about what I knew what I was talking about there, kind of. Uh, and what's going on here is there are two of these gaskets or shims. Now they are very, very small metal shims. There we go. And the tolerance on this wheel loader is that of like, you're talking less than micromillimeters. Everything fits together very snugly, especially if you have uh, 
painted it. Now, thankfully, I haven't done layer after layer after layer, which is good. I've only had a few layers in there. Um, but to get those rams seated properly so you could put the pins in, plus put a shim up here, a shim down here, run the, uh, the, the swing pin through the center, run the th swing pin through the center. Then, if you're lucky enough to have one of these handy-dandy little uh, clip um, you know, for the eclipse of the tool, you can just clip it on like I did on either side, and then you are left with this. But for me to do all that on camera was way too many small parts and more effective for me just to show you the end result. Step four has to do, is really simple, just putting three screws into a small piece. And you can see the small piece here. This has three holes in it on the side and in the front. They're obviously gonna be going in the front. This is the bag you need. There's only three screws in there. Use a little bit of Loctite in all the areas that you don't have any paint. Even if you have paint, some people would say use Loctite. It's totally at your discretion. Uh, any on metal on metal should have blue Loctite uh, at least. Now, as I turn the page, you'll be excited to see, look at this, we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes right away. There is the motor, there is the transmission, everything is getting installed on the chassis right now. In fact, there is the pump, the hydraulic pump and motor. Look how quickly we get to get into this, and there we go. I bet you that is going to be some sort of wire stay. Right, those screws are actually, if I can get the better light here, those screws are gonna be holding something in place. It's a brushless little outrunner motor for the hydraulic pump. I actually think this is great. Normally we do something other than this and this is like further into the build, but instead we're shaking it up a little bit and getting into electronics and transmissions and hydraulics right away. So here is the motor that's going to be responsible for moving the whole machine forward and backward. You can see here it's a canned 540 27 uh, turn brushed motor. Uh, that means uh, it has a couple of brushes that push up against a comm, positive and negative charge, uh, makes it go forward and backwards. Yes, this is a rebuildable motor. That's nice to know. Uh, one of the things I noticed though, and it seems to lack in the instruction book, is that when we look at number five, it just shows the motor and transmission together. Together. And an untrained eye, if you're building this for your first time, would be wondering how the fuck do I put this together because there's no goddamn way you even know. So here is the transmission itself, okay? I know that if you have a motor with a motor shaft, you're going to need a pinion on the end. Most people would know that. Uh, and the pinion is actually going to have to turn those gears on the inside. You can see them kind of sticking through the center diameter there. Not on the outside, but on the inside diameter. There's three gears poking through through with a hole in the middle. What I've done is I've taken the screws on the outside here out and I removed this plate from that. This is going to be your motor mount plate I'm assuming. I don't know I'm just kind of going along here kind of troubleshooting with you guys. Now this is the pinion that I could find. The neat thing about this pinion is it's not like a normal pinion. Uh, in fact this is going to be one that you have to push onto the motor shaft. Now how are you expected to do that without damaging the motor? That's a good question, uh, but I assume what we have to do is basically put that pinion uh, in the center so it's seated properly uh, like this. You can see it fits very nicely. And then what I want to do is I want to put that uh, motor mount onto the motor itself. Now it'll have pre-drilled holes that will line up with the motor holes you can see on the front face there. And then once that's mounted, we can reset this onto the transmission like this. Once the motor plate was attached, I had to take a couple of my own screws and kind of grind down on the sander uh, the tops of them so that they could fit flush with the motor mount plate. And then I had to tap that pinion on in place. Even though the motor shaft had a, a flat spot on it, uh, the pinion had no area to put a set screw in. After that, I just simply did up these four screws. One, two, three, four, and this is what you have. Hopefully everything is going to work. I don't see that these uh, output drives go all the way through 
through? I'm curious about that. They're, they only go halfway, so I've never seen that before. This does have a two-speed transmission though, so it's gonna have lots of grunt power if set up properly. Hopefully I did it right. What's the next step? So I have to set up the two mounts that are here. Now believe it or not, you guys are watching this in just a few minutes, but this is actually taking me quite a bit of time to figure out these steps and know how they go in here. I'm gonna pay special attention that there are M36s, four of these going in on either side to mount it up to the frame, as well as these mounts here somehow go on to the frame right there and I'll just lift this motor and transmission in drop it down and it will sit like that and then one of these on either side the only reason I mention about how long it takes me to do this is to give you guys if you are building along at home a more realistic expectation of how things are, are going to look like I'm getting it done for a few in a few minutes on video it may take you an hour it took me at least 20 minutes to get these two together and to get these pins in place properly might have even been closer to half an hour all right, so once these brackets are in place, all I want to do is make sure I can line up those two holes of the pump motor. It's going to go to these two receiving holes right here. I'm going to use a couple of M36s to get it installed. Wait, that can't be right. This doesn't fit there. It must be on top then. No, because it shows it in the book differently. Let's see, in the book goes to those two holes, it goes to that, looks like it does fit, but I don't see anything that's a riser on that piece. What am I missing? What is it that I do not understand? No, it's just a, it's a cross section of the tank area. So it, don't, it doesn't show the tank, it shows it just lining up there. But when I go to, oh, okay, it must be these two holes right here then. Yeah, my bad, that's what it is. Okay, for those screws, I use the Loctite 545 thread sealant for hydraulic fittings. Uh, not that it's necessary, you can get away with just normal blue Loctite if you want, but I just use that. Uh, just as, once I start getting into the hydraulics and knowing that this is all going to be vibrating, I make sure everything is locked down real nice. Now, speaking of this Loctite 545, I'll try to find some and put it in the video description box. This leads right into this distribution block. Look at this. Two M5 nozzles right on the end here, or fittings as they'd say, they call them nozzles in the book. And then you got these M3 fittings or nozzles as they call them in the book. Uh, you actually have to build this. Each one of these fittings, I made sure to put this Loctite uh, uh, thread sealant on there. You do not want any hydraulic fluid leaking around in there. You want to make sure that all your fittings are as secure as possible. Now that is step number six. Uh, this I'm going to go on to step number seven where it just basically shows you cutting the steering horns for the three servos that you're going to be installing. These are the micro servos. Here is the hydraulic block. So each one of these servos is controlling a flow valve. Right, so there's three different valves and they have to have an in and an out. This is what controls the rams going up and down or left and right. Then we're gonna be installing this block into, or pardon me, onto the back of the, uh, of the loader. Now let's go over here, here is the block. In case you guys are wondering, you haven't seen it, I'll be slicing that, out, that open so you can see it. And then of course here are these micro servos that already come with the kit. Please don't assume that when you see this hydraulic block that these fittings already have sealant in it. I would always encourage when you get your new stuff to take it apart, make sure it's properly sealed. I don't mean take apart the whole block, I mean just remove the fittings here. Uh, use, a, use a small uh, wrench and get them apart and make sure to use the thread sealant. Very important. So here is a little handy unit. If you don't have one of these in your arsenal, you might want to get one. This is a servo centering uh, a little chip, basically, and dial. This allows me to center servos before I install them. Why is that important? Well, in a hydraulic valve block, you want to make sure that all your, your valves are closed and none of them are slightly open or else, you know, when you go to move your machine, it will kind of have hydraulic 
bleed back and it'll try to bleed back into the hydraulic tank and it won't hold its position. So you always want to make sure that all your servos start the same. This does not come with the kit. Uh, I'll try to find one somewhere and put it a link down in the uh, video description. Here is all three. Now I can either manually change the horns by just moving this dial left and right. You can see I'm doing that here. Or if I want, I can set them just to uh, cycle for me so I can see them all moving if I'm testing. So there's one. Yes, all three of them plugged in at once, acting in unison. And then if I want to reset them all to neutral, I can just set it right into the center and it does it for me. All I'm doing is just plugging this into a small battery source and all three of them can be done at once. Unplug the battery source and they are all centered. You're ready to go. So the horns are gonna slide into these three, and these three are gonna be what open and close the valves of the block itself. So you gotta cut the horns so that they're flush with the sides of this circle. Look at that, two of them have the steering horn in. I trimmed this one just to show you. You can just drop it in. Then that way all three have the steering horns in there. That way you know where neutral position is. You see on the valve block, it's got a flat spot on each side. Go ahead and drop each steering horn onto the flat spot that coincides with the proper steering horn. Once those are in place and you're pleased with what you see, you make sure that there's no binding going on all the way around and your steering horns are short enough, drop all three neutrally placed servos in place and cinch them down with screws. And this is what your completed valve block will look like if it's all sealed up, everything is done. Now I'm ready to install it on the back. But before I install it on those sweet little holes, I got to point something out because this is going to be very complicated for some people and I could understand why. So I'm going to try to go through this very quickly. There are two uh, sizes of pipe. <laughs> large and small. Going into the distribution block that we built earlier, which would be this part right here, this distribution block, which is when we built it, it's not attached to anything, just has those, remember, those four nipples on the end. I'm allowed, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> You're gonna take, look at this, look how, look how steep of a curve that is to turn and bend these plastic tubes. Well, that's a bit of a concern. They're, they're, they're pressure tubes. So what they give you is this like spring-like material that can go over where you're supposed to bend it and it will help it from crimping as bad or kinking up as bad. Now, I've already gone, hey, how, what? <laughs> yeah, you're right, I've already hooked it up. Now, did I make this go the entire length, this extra sheathing on the outside? No, I did not. Could I? Yes. Some people would say that I screwed up. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't like it all on there. I only like it in certain areas, but you do have enough to use it all you want. Before you mount this up, which is what it calls for in the book, before you mount this up, do yourself a favor and do your tubing, because doing the tubing while it's already on the back very challenging because you got to heat it up. You got to cinch these tubes down. Uh, these are the large diameter tube that goes to the actual distribution block itself. And then you're going to be using the smaller diameter tube. Okay, dudes, I tried to do this part of the video like 10 times for you just to make it not uh, mentally mind warping. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking because I find it's just more confusing than anything. But the valve block has an in and out uh, on the top, right? This is coming from the pump and is distributed into the block. This is the return, which will go back to the tank uh, when, when we don't need to have the oil filling up the rams. The oil is uh, in and out or open and closed by the valve block, which goes into the distribution block, which gets fed into the coinciding rams that is asking for power. Now remember, because this is articulating back and forth, which means these are the rams that turn the machine uh, in the middle to, turn, to make it go the direction that you want, while one area is filling up, when this ram is filling up, this ram has to actually uh, have the fluid go back down and out, so it's forcing fluid from the other direction in here, right? Does that make sense? When this is actually being 
uh, forced to, to be pushed up. This one here is being forced to be pushed down. So it goes back to the tank and returned. I know it's complicated. Yes, it is. Uh, you'll see here for my final move, I did uh, install the block onto the chassis. There is the, uh, uh, um, from the pump and then to the tank. And then here is that first channel that runs all the way down into the distribution block in through the front. It's in through the bottom and then distributed up through the top. The two outer ones going to the top of the rams, which you can see right here, the two outer ones going to the top. And then of course the middle ones here crisscrossing to go to the two inside receivers uh, for the hydraulic tube. So there you go, my friends. It is a very arduous task. And although you did not really see me doing those, uh, the, that tubing, you can see it's a very small area uh, where big hands do not do well with small parts on camera. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I've earned a like click from you today, uh, or maybe even you've left me a comment. Are you excited about this project? I know this doesn't really look like too much, does it? No, it doesn't, but I'll say in the next episode, we're going to be getting into putting on some of the more major body parts. Uh, we're going to see this thing come together more and more every episode. So my friends, I'd say if you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so so you can become alerted. And if you're speaking of alerted, have you touched that bell beside the subscribe button? You have to actually ask if you, uh, or you actually have to uh, uh, um, indicate if you want all notifications or just some of them. Make sure that you update your settings uh, all across your network on your mobiles as well if you want to keep up to date with this and not miss the next build. We'll see you in the next episode, my friends, of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC, or if you're like me, geek out, stay inside, and build one. Bye, guys.